गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन टूडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट डेवलपमेंट ऑफ एक्स्ट्रा हेपैटिक बिलेरी अपैरेटस डेवलपमेंट ऑफ गॉल ब्लैडर सिस्टिक डक्ट इट इज एंडोडर्मल एंड इट डेवलप्स फ्रॉम द पार्ट्स सिस्टिका एंड दिस पार्ट सिस्टिका अराइज फ्रॉम द हेपैटिक बर्ड हेयर यू कैन सी द हेपैटिक बर्ड विच अराइज फ्रॉम द कॉर्डल पार्ट ऑफ द फोर गट और यू कैन सी फ्रॉम द जंक्शन ऑफ फोर गट एंड मेड गट दिस इज द जंक्शन ऑफ फोर गट एंड मेड गट दिस वन एंड फ्रॉम हेयर द फ्रॉम द कॉर्डल पार्ट ऑफ द फोर गट एंडोडर्मल बर्ड इज अराइजिंग दैट इज कॉल्ड एज हेपैटिक बर्ड दिस हेपैटिक बर्ड डिवाइड इन टू टू पार्ट्स लार्जर वन इज द पार्ट हेपैटिका एंड स्मॉलर वन इज द पार्ट सिस्टिका दिस पार्ट सिस्टिका गिव राइज टू ओरिजन ऑफ द गॉल ब्लैडर एंड सिस्टिक डक्ट एंड दिस प्रोक्सिमल पार्ट ऑफ द हेपैटिक बर्ड विच इज कनेक्टिंग दिज पार्ट सिस्टिका एंड हेपैटिका विद द फोर गट इट बिकम्स नैरोज एंड इट फॉर्म्स द कॉमन बाइल डप्ट सो इट विल फॉर्म द कॉमन बाइल डप्ट सो दिस इज द ओरिजन ऑफ द और डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द गॉल ब्लैडर सिस्टिक डक्ट एंड कॉमन बाइल डप्ट Now initially the common bile duct opens on the ventral aspect of the duodenum but later on due to uh, growth of the duodenum and uh, because of rotation of the uh, of the common bile duct and ventral pancreatic duct <coughs> this shift uh, towards the posterior medial aspect of the duodenum so because of rotation of the common bile duct and ventral pancreatic bird it is uh, this bile duct is shifted on the posterior medial aspect of the duodenum initially this uh, extra hepatic biliary apparatus is occluded by epithelial cells because of proliferation of the epithelial cells the, the lumen of the, the extra hepatic biliary apparatus is occluded then there will be recanalization of the, the uh, extra hepatic biliary apparatus by the way of vacuolization and then re regeneration of the cells the same process which occurs in the esophagus and duodenum here the recanalization is occurring now congenital anomalies of the gall bladder first is the agenesis of the gall bladder or the absence of gall bladder if the pars cystica forms uh, from the hepatic bud fails to develop hepatic bud forms the two diverticulum one is the pars cystica one is the pars hepatica sometimes only uh, from the hepatic bud only pars hepatica is formed pars cystica is not formed in this condition gall bladder and cystic duct will not develop this is called as agenesis of the gall bladder second is the absence of the cystic duct sometimes pars cystica forms only the gall bladder not the cystic duct in this condition the gall bladder drains directly into the common bile duct because a cystic duct is not present so it will drain directly into the common bile duct and this condition is called as sessile gall bladder in this condition a uh, surgeon has to keep in mind sometimes the sessile gall bladder may be present and during cholecystectomy there may <coughs> be severe damage to the common bile duct then coming the hartmann's pouch uh, this is the fundus of the gall bladder and uh, this is the neck of the gall bladder narrowed part is the neck of gall bladder so sometimes from the posterior medial part of the neck of gall bladder a projection or pouch is growing and this pouch is called as hartmann's pouch so a pouch is formed when posterior medial part of the neck of gall bladder is projecting downwards and what is the importance of this hartmann's pouch the gall stone may be lost in this pouch now one condition is that is uh, called as pharyngeal gap in this condition the fundus of the gall bladder this is the fundus of gall bladder this is folded on itself and uh, assuming the shape of cap so this condition uh, this cap is called as pharyngeal cap so fundus of the gall bladder folded on itself to form a cap like a structure that is called as pharyngeal cap so this condition is called as pharyngeal cap sometimes a septa is present in the gall bladder that is called as septate gall bladder and septa is sometimes the septa is complete and divide the gall bladder into two parts and that condition is called as double gall bladder and sometimes the gall bladder is present into the uh, liver tissue or it is called as intrahepatic gall bladder so these are the congenital anomalies of the gall bladder now uh, 
some other congenital anomalies of the extrahepatic biliary apparatus. Most fatal congenital anomaly is the intrahepatic biliary ap atresia. Then the one anomaly is the collidocal cyst. In this condition, due to area of the weakness in the wall of bile duct, there uh, develops a cyst that is called as collidocal cyst. This is the wall of bile duct and from the area of weakness a cyst is formed. This is called as collidocal cyst. Up to the 2 liter of bile may, uh, may be accumulated in this uh, cyst and it can compress the bile duct and it will produce the obstructive jaundice. Okay, so this is collidocal cyst. One condition is uh, sometimes the entire extrahepatic biliary apparatus is absent that is called as uh, absence of entire extrahepatic biliary system. Sometimes there is atresia of the bile duct is there and in some condition accessory bile duct is present. So these are the congenital anomalies of the extrahepatic biliary apparatus. So that's all about extrahepatic extrahepatic biliary apparatus. Thank you.